All right, here we are. So Susan, thank you so much for getting together with me. Um, we're going to have a really great conversation, and I'm sure we could talk the rest of the day about this topic. <laughs> um, but people know who I am with the State Library, but Susan, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? I sure can. It's nice to see you this morning, Marika. My name is Susan Corbett. I am the executive director and founder of the National Digital Equity Center with a home office here in the great state of Maine. Great. And we decided uh, that having a little conversation this morning about the work that NDEC does and specifically about the affordable connectivity program might be a great way to get libraries interested in, in learning more. Um, so I know NDE, NDEC has been around for a while doing great work across the state, but for people who are not necessarily as familiar with it, what, what do you do? What are some of the programs that you're proud of that you'd like to talk about? So the National Digital Equity Center has a goal of closing the digital divide um, across the state and across the country. Um, we have been offering free digital skills classes to all main residents. Classes are broken into three different curricula. There's for work and business, so all of those Microsoft classes, um, the uh, uh, QuickBooks, how to build a website, um, how to manage social media. For um, home and education, uh, we do. Uh, we did a lot of training with teachers at the onset of the pandemic and teaching them how to use Google Classroom and Google Meet. Um, we do internet safety, uh, internet safety for all ages, and then internet safety for parents and grandparents of teens and tweens, because those kiddos know far more than we do. Um, the, the affordable connectivity program, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, and then one of our favorites is um, a cloud library. So we partnered with the Maine State Library several years ago to help people learn how to check out a book online at their local library or at the state library. Um, and then we have a course curricula called Aging Well with Technology. Um, this uh, curricula was put together pre-pandemic with the help of the New England Telehealth Resource Center for classes for older adults protecting your online presence, um, uh, protecting yourself from fraud and abuse, identifying scams, um, making sure you have a, a, um, a safe and good password, a strong password. Um, and then we also do classes on managing um, uh, your healthcare through certain apps and how to monitor your, you know, keep track of your blood pressure, your blood sugar, exercise or, or, um, or weight. So we do all of the classes, all the classes are free. They are available either online or we have over 200 partner organizations across the state, including a lot of our local libraries that are holding classes. We bring, we have a facilitator on site and then we bring the instructor in over Zoom. We also manage um, affordable device programs where sometimes an organization will raise funds and we will get those devices provisioned and get them into the hands of the people that they want to receive those devices. Um, and then um, we are a, a proponents of affordable broadband. We've been, we have classes on how to apply for the FCC affordable connectivity program. We hold classes for organizations that um, would like to assist the people that they serve. And so we held a class for those organizations as well. And then we write digital equity and digital inclusion plans. Um, NDEC was very involved in the state digital equity plan and those local and regional plans. Um, so we try to cover all aspects of digital inclusion and digital and digital equity in the work we do. Wow, Susan, you you just listed off so many different things. It's it's really wonderful, and like you say, it's you covered you covered the all three prongs of digital equity: the the classes, the skills, the affordability, and the broadband. It's really it's really great. You mentioned that you have a lot of library partners. Can you just talk a little bit about what that actually looks like when a library partners? Sure. So a lot of our rural libraries um, have small staff, limited hours, not a lot of resources, sure. but want to provide um, the digital skills training to the clients that they serve. 
And so we train a facilitator. It could be a librarian. It could be um, a, a volunteer at the library on um, to be the facilitator at that location. We come in over Zoom. We sent the instructor comes in over Zoom, teaches the class. Um, we have a we train the volunteer um, on our portal so that they can go in and choose classes that they want to hold at their location. And then every month and every quarter we upload reports so they can see the the, the number of students that have come through um, their classes. Um, it's been a great partnership. Um, it. It for the volunteer at that host location, they may stay afterwards and help somebody one on one mm -hmm. um, to to figure out how to how to sign how to um, sign up for an email address, and then they have the support of the full um, NDEC staff if they run into trouble. We have a ticket, um, a, a, on, a online portal, or you can call us if you need help, and we'll mm -hmm. find. Um, a digital navigator, which we have not talked about digital navigators, but we'll find a digital navigator to help at that location. Yeah, it's great. I'm so glad to hear that libraries are taking advantage of all of it. Um, so yeah, so I think you just segued really well into the affordable connectivity program, which is really what spurred this conversation and, and to talk about what that is a little bit, um, why, well, not necessarily why, because it's pretty clear why you would be involved, but um, how, how you are involved and to touch on the digital navigator program, that would be great. Sure, so during the height of the pandemic, um, the federal government FCC put forward a program called emergency broadband benefit. And this was a, a, a subsidy that would offset broadband costs on a monthly basis. And then that transitioned into a program about a year and a half ago called the affordable connectivity program. The, if you meet the income eligibility guidelines, and it's 200% uh, of federal poverty guidelines, um, the family will get a $30 per month discount. And if you live on tribal land, you'll get a $75 per month discount. Um, but, you know, with any federal program, it can be a little daunting of, you know, what information does the, the family or the subscriber have to provide to the FCC. And, and so we develop classes first under the emergency broadband benefit and then into the um, connectivity program where we help a family before they apply, help them figure out what they're gonna be asked and the information that they have to have, the documents they have to have to prove their income eligibility. Um, and then often it's a, it's a lengthy process. It's usually about an hour um, that someone has it takes to apply sometimes it goes faster but if you if you've never done a, a uploaded a pdf or you don't even know what that is then you've got to you know need some might need some help in getting prepared to apply mm -hmm. um once the benefit once they've been approved from the fcc on that benefit then sometimes they might run into problems with the internet service provider of not getting the right benefit and so we have a whole system in place where um, anyone, a librarian who's talking to the, one of their um, constituents or an individual can fill out this form and NDEC staff, our digital navigators will do their best to re help resolve those issues. It's amazing. It, it, it's, it's a good program, but the hurdle of applying can be really daunting for someone who is, you know, a little hesitant to be online. So it's, it's huge having that kind of help. So Susan, what exactly is a digital navigator and what what do they do if they were gonna to come to the library? <laughs> so a the term digital navigator is a new term and it started to surface about two or three years ago. Um, NDC has had digital navigators on board since um, for about two or three years. Um, our first digital navigators were virtual digital navigators. Somebody would call our office and say, you know, I don't, I don't know how to apply for the emergency broadband benefit or the ACP benefit, or I don't know how to sign up for an email address. And so the um, digital navigator would then help that person solve whatever um, the issue was. Over 
the past year or so, we've seen a huge um, spike in digital navigators. Um, NDC received some funding from the National Digital Inclusion Alliance, which is a national organization around digital equity and digital inclusion. And we had our first on the ground digital navigator in Washington County that started in January. I just saw the list of digital navigators that have been trained across the state of Maine, and there are already over 30 digital navigators. Oh. And, um, and NDC provides all that training free, whether they are our staff or our volunteer or a community digital navigator, we make sure everybody's got the tools so that they can help the people um, in their, in their um, region. Uh, digital navigators are, is a trusted guide that helps someone um, uh, with digital skills or applying for that ACP or even figuring out what type of device that they that they might need mm -hmm. to have. Mm -hmm. So um, where um, I think that we're going to see more and more um, digital navigators, uh, we have all of our digital navigators sign a code of conduct so that mm -hmm. um, and we make sure mm -hmm. that they meet they meet those in uh, the individuals in public places libraries can be a great resource for this. Um, Some place where two people can meet and, 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 and our digital navigator can help that local person um, be, uh, apply for the ACP or sign up for an email address. Mm -hmm. So if a library wanted to, well, I guess they could either train to be a digital navigator, but they could also host a digital navigator. How do they do that? How would they do that? So we have a um, we, we have a, um, a very quick form that a um, library can fill out or any organization can fill out and say, I'd like to host classes. I'd like to have one of my staff trained as a digital navigator. I have private space for someone to meet. So keep that in mind too. When you're talking, when you're working with someone on the ACP, you're talking, you know, you, you're discussing financial information. Mm -hmm. So ensuring that the meeting is not in public where everybody can hear what someone's um, annual family income is, is important, private space. And so a library can say, you know, I only want to host classes or um, I really don't have any space for someone to meet one-on-one, -on -one. Um, or maybe that's all the space I have is for someone to meet one-on-one. -on -one. The library can do as much or as little as they would like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to plug into it. Yeah, thank you. So Susan, you shared with me some resources that I can share when I post the recording of this, but um, are there specific things that we should highlight of, about for, for libraries, thinking about libraries that might want to be engaged. So signing up, filling the form out to sign up your website, obviously. Are there okay. other resources you'd want to call out? We have a, um, a, um, a web link for, that says need help that any individual or someone on behalf of an individual can fill out that form. And because they, the individual needs some help in a specific digital inclusion area. So that's a very quick little form that you fill in. Um, we we um, advise that if you are filling out a need help form on behalf of someone else, just make sure that that individual knows that somebody from National Digital Equity mm -hmm. Center right. will be calling them. Um, and then the other is the ACP um, uh, ticket, uh, issue ticket. And that again is an online portal where if you're you're working with someone to help them sign up for an ACP, there's certain information that we have to gather in order to work with the internet service provider. Mm -hmm. You know, they might want the account number, they might want the ACP confirmation number, they might they need the physical address, and so we capture all of that in one form so that we can then take that form and then move it forward and try to get it resolved by, with the internet service provider. Okay, okay, great. So those links are on your website. So that's a one, one shop stop, one stop shop. Um, so I'll send that out. Is there anything else that you think libraries should know about promoting the ACP or anything related to digital equity? 
So know that we are a resource. Um, if you don't have the staffing or volunteers or the capacity to help someone one-on-one, -on -one, you can refer them over to us. Um, I think um, for libraries to promote the affordable connectivity program, put a poster up. We have some, there's some nice posters that are handouts that we can provide the library um, that will be there for the, the, the clients that they're serving. Um, but I think that know that you're not in this alone. We're not expecting everybody to take a program and start it from, you know, from ground zero. We're here to help you in any way that we can. And if you don't have the capacity to do it perfectly fine, just refer them, refer them over, for, refer the individual over to us. Great. Thank you, Susan. I think we, I think we ticked all the boxes. I think we covered what we had intended to. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk about it. Well, thank you. And I think that I think it's going to be helpful for libraries to just hear a little bit about it. Um, so I'll post this on our listserv, and hopefully you'll be getting some library calls in the Wonderful. next next Wonderful. week. So, all right, I'm going to stop the recording then. Thanks, Marika.